Hello and welcome to another episode of the AWS Ninja. Today I want to cover a very recent thing I found out with AWS WAF. So, but first I want to cover what can be done with AWS WAF and rate limiting rules. So, uh, th this is the new announcement that AWS just put out, like really a few hours ago. Uh, which talk about the way we can rate limit requests with AWS WAF uh, while tracking things other than the client's IP address. And this is huge. But, but first again, let's cover what was previously uh, possible with AWS WAF. So uh, we have this well-known blog where uh, uh, people from AWS covered the best ways you can use rate-based rules with AWS WAF, and they talk about putting uh, blanket rules. So just mentioning, I never want to receive more than X amount of requests from a single IP address. They also talk about uh, some URIs might be more sensitive, like the search page maybe, or the checkout, or the sign up, or whatever. And you might wanna have an aggressive rate limit on that, again, from a single IP address. So no more than a hundred requests from a single IP address within a five minute period. That's the way it goes. Like it's always a five minute period. Uh, and another type of rule that they had suggested was um, known bad sources. So I wanna take you through like a basic web, web ACL, like a WAF policy that I have here set up. Uh, and this policy, basically does very simple things just for the demos purposes, which is they first we highlight bad IPs. Um, we only use it in count mode. We don't block like the IP, like bad IP reputation or any anonymous IP. We don't do that. And then we have a blank a blanket rate limit rule that says um, no more than 10,000 requests from a single actor like a single source address. And if any IP goes beyond 10,000, I'm just gonna block them. Um, another rate limiting rule, I, I was just following the blog, right? So another rate limiting rule said uh, known bad sources. So if I had traffic coming from uh, the, the managed IP lists, like the IP reputation lists or anonymous proxies list, um, like whichever category this rule found. This is why I'm using a namespace instead of a label. Uh, once they go over uh, 100 requests, I want to capture them, right? But this is a neat little feature. You can pop up capture if anyone from a bad source goes beyond 100 requests in five minutes. And the last rule I had for rate limiting in this policy was for sensitive URIs. Uh, so for example, I wanted to rate limit 500 requests from a single IP source to anything that starts with checkout. Just let's check out. And if they go beyond 500, I challenge them. Basically, a challenge is like a silent JavaScript challenge, not like an obtrusive capture. Uh, it's just something that the browser solves. Uh, so we can make sure that whoever is doing those 500 requests from that single IP, it might be like a NAT situation where we have multiple users behind the single IP. So I don't want to block that IP, but I do want to make sure that the request is coming from a valid browser that can run JavaScript challenges and, you know, the return the cookie or whatever. Uh, so this is like a good approach. Uh, so this was, these were my only options. Uh, relatively speaking, like only tracking IP addresses, which is right effective, right? It's good, but there are some situations where an IP address might represent more than one user, or maybe we don't want to track the IP address, but we want to track a certain country, or we want to track, you know, anything like something or another in the application, like a, a, a specific parameter, like a specific product on our retail site, or, um, maybe a certain behavior like a managed rule happening too often and we want to start blocking everybody coming in through that specific rule and for that aws has introduced a new type of rate-based rule which is basically the same method of ed adding those rate-based rules uh, as before
right? I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to pick out the rate based rule. But now I can choose to say, let's say the rate would be 200, but I want to track something else than an IP address. So before we only had this option, like a source IP or the source IP in a specific header, like if the requests came through a proxy or a CDN layer. Um, so I can look in the specific X forward four header or whatever header contained the IP address. But now we have two new options, which are super cool. So the first option is quite simple and it says count all. So I don't want to track any single entity and any single client, right? If I have a situation where I know my application will tip over, if it's being hit with more than, I don't know, 2000 requests to the sign up page, this will, you know, bomb my, uh, my database or whatever, clog my pipes, my, 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 my queue, whatever it is in my application, which I know doesn't work that well. And I want to avoid a situation where uh, like even good traffic, maybe 2000 does a bit too aggressive, let's say 20,000. Uh, requests within five minutes from anybody, like all combined, um, I don't want to allow that. So I can do a count all, then obviously I probably want to make sure that uh, like for a specific URI path or maybe a specific uh, query string parameter, like uh, only for a specific shoe or a specific product on my retail site or whatever it is. And I can make sure that I keep track of that across the board, like everybody at once. And I don't want to allow more than 20,000 requests from everybody together in a single five minute window to hit my application. This is really creating DDoS. You, you create DDoS on your own, like actively. You are DDoSing your good and bad actors at once. But if you know that your application might die, if it gets more than that, it's it's better off if you can start blocking them, like when they come in. In these situations, typically you want to make sure that you don't block block them, but you want to maybe send them like a, a 302 response code with a specific location header that says uh, go back and, and you know come back to my uh, waiting room, or maybe like a nice like nice. 200 message uh, with a certain content, like you can add HTML content there or JSON if it's an API, uh, and you can say, you know, come back in a few minutes. Uh, so this is super useful, but it's not even the coolest thing that we have with this new release uh, from AWS UF. So the other thing we have, which is actually the coolest, is custom keys. And with custom keys, we can now choose to have things other than IP addresses act as the key for tracking. So I can say uh, I want to track a specific cookie. So let's say you have a certain cookie in your application, uh, which is unique per user. Uh, and you can say like session. I can use the session cookie value to track users. So let's say if you have a situation where you have multiple many users like a carrier grade NAT or like any kind of large scale NAT uh, where a single IP might represent more than one user, uh, potentially hundreds or thousands of users. And for mobile apps, it's quite common to see that. Uh, you can say, I don't care about the IP addresses. I only want to look at a session cookie. Now you could argue obviously that these session cookies can be deleted by, by attackers and this way they would avoid tracking. So we can have composite keys and I can say like a session and an IP address, or I can even use a cookie that protects itself. And what, I, what do I mean by that? So um, I have this very simple uh, web page uh, and this web page, if I look at the source, um, you'll see that I integrated this JavaScript challenge. And this JavaScript challenge is something also that WAF provides. Uh, it allows you to integrate. It's a part of the bot control mechanism, but you can do it with, you know, other services as well. Or you can really just uh, challenge all incoming requests. And once you do that, like either way, once you challenge incoming requests, 
all subsequent requests after a successful challenge was solved, and it's, by the way, it's the same with challenges and captures or the SDK integration, there are multiple ways to obtain that token. But once you have that, you will see that your session will now be associated with an AWS, AWS uh, WAF uh, token, which is unique, right? It's a, it's a unique token value. Uh, which is attached by AWS WAF. Now, going back to AWS WAF, I can show you where to do that. Um, let me cancel out of this. Basically, what you want to do is to find your application integration tab and select your own uh, uh, WebACL, the one that you use right now. And this is the thing you want to copy and paste into your application. But you can also do, uh, um, like I showed before, like a challenge request or a captcha, a challenge action or a captcha action uh, in any kind of condition, not only rate-based conditions. And this way you force incoming requests to come with a token in them. Uh, and once you do that, you can now add another rate-based rule. Rate-based rule, this is RBR. Right, and I want a rate based. I want a rate based on a specific custom key, which is a cookie, and that cookie is AWS WAF token. Now, why is this good practice? Because this token is validated by AWS WAF. Uh, plus, if someone comes without that token, WAF will re-challenge them. So if I go and delete the token from my application, and come without it to the application, WAF will challenge me again, would force me to go through the challenge again, prove that I'm an actual browser, and this way I have a new token. Now, arguably, I can you know recreate this token every new request, but then I really get slowed down if I aim to hurt an application as an attacker. If I keep on getting challenged, I, I rapidly like give up. It would really slow down, it makes my attack more, much more expensive. Plus, if you use something like bot control, you can really, it, it's really, it becomes really hard to circumvent uh, for various reasons. So basically I, I can delete this cookie, right? I can delete it and refresh the page. Uh, and when I refresh the page, I get resent uh, uh, to the challenge page, right? Uh, this is done in a way that the user wouldn't see, but then I, I, I now I have the token again. So I, I, I can keep deleting that, but all I will, be going through is just challenged uh, again and again and again. Um, and you can also create like rules in your OBCL that goes, if a, if a token is not present, like token absent, just block traffic. So this is one good thing you could do with these rate-based rules. I know I'm, I'm going on and on about other things, but it does all make sense at the end. Another thing you can do, which is truly powerful, is the label namespace. And the label namespace means that you can use any of the namespaces you have built in or the ones you create on your own. And you can say that anyone um, which is actively uh, um, acting in a DDoS attack, let's say, that has a token absent, once I go over a thousand requests with an absent token in them in the last five minutes, I start blocking anyone with an absent token. So I increase my panic levels, right? This is uh, uh, one thing I can do. Another thing I can do is use uh, uh, label namespaces for specific geos. Like I don't have a geo-based rule in here, but uh, you can do that. You can use a specific namespace that like any anybody from the uh, reputation list, like whenever this namespace appears, I'm fine with it unless the number of requests that had this namespace associated with them goes beyond a hundred a thousand in this case I start blocking everybody like it seems like I'm currently going through an attack campaign why, why else would I see so many IPS with a bad IP reputation on them uh, and I can still like besides setting these custom keys I can still go and scope down and say only for my login page only for my checkout page only for my shopping cart like whatever apis or endpoints you're sensitive about. So you can scope down those uh, statements and you can also scope down for certain IP addresses or countries which you know all traffic coming from is valid. So you might do that. So you can use that kind of scope down. 
and you can say block, you can say count, you can challenge as, as seen before, you can capture, uh, basically anything that fits your application needs, uh, you can do based on rates. So this is another thing you can do with the custom keys. Another thing you can obviously do is use a specific uh, query argument. So if you have like a specific argument in the query string, like a shoe ID, sorry to be picking on shoes, but maybe a flight ID or an airline ID or whatever it is that you are concerned with on your own application, you can keep track of how many concurrent requests in a five minute uh, window are there for this specific argument. And if you have more than 100, it seems like someone is trying to buy out your stock or, or flood your application. Depends on what your application is, right? So you can use a specific parameter and still you can use a combination of a specific parameter and an IP address um, or a specific parameter and a specific cookie and only block out specific sessions that are trying to abuse that specific uh, shoe, like trying to rebuy re the same shoe over and over again. It could be a zip code if you're a pizza company. It could be anything, right? You can, you can use anything in the query string uh, in order to rate limit that. Um, obviously, some of the uh, easiest to enforce uh, rules would be around the HTTP method. So no more than X deletes per five minutes from anybody, not from a specific IP, right? Remember, the key that we're tracking is no longer the IP address necessarily. It could be anything. Uh, maybe specific headers, like you see an abusive user agent header as a part of a botnet that you're, at, you're, you're getting targeted with. You can use that. So use a specific header like a user agent. There are like many, so many different options for you to start fine tuning the places where you need to rate limit uh, access to your application based on truly anything, which is amazing. Another thing you can do if what you have here is not enough, you can create custom rules and these custom rules can match any kind of traffic pattern, like a combination of country, like only traffic coming from Christmas Island, plus um, a specific query string parameter, plus uh, a specific referrer header, and label them. Like do nothing, just count, Also, but also add a label. And you can use that label namespace, that custom label that you're creating to rate limit based on that. Uh, so you can create whatever condition you want to start labeling traffic and then create a label namespace match rule to start rate limiting based on that. So the options are pretty much limitless and there are multiple use cases for that. Um, but I, I, I would assume that some of the most common use cases you'll be starting to play around with would be tracking cookies, tracking countries, using count all to make sure your application doesn't tip over. Uh, you know, at, at a certain rate, if that's like a, an architecture that you still have, hopefully you don't, but you know, some things happen. Uh, and I think that was it uh, for this cool new feature. I'm going to play around with it for a few days and figure out what else can be done with it. But it seems like it's going to be a super useful uh, feature for AWS WAF users against DDoS, against bots to protect your application's IP or business logic. Uh, it's going to be super useful. Uh, so that's it for me. I know it's kind of long. It's like, I think, going on 19 minutes now. But uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for listening. And see you on the next video.